now I'm going to make this link and, and then we get into the solutions. Now I'm going to make the link to the electromagnetic fields. A, uh, a acquainted physician in Switzerland who is the main mold uh, researcher um, in, in Europe made a beautiful experiment. He grew mold cultures uh, under a, a Faraday cage, yeah, just simply like a, a, a silver coat. Um, it looks like a mosquito net that is made out of silver coated cloth that's been draped over the, the mold culture. And he measured how much mycotoxins, how much toxins are these molds producing on a daily basis. It's pretty easy to do. Then he lifted the mosquito net and exposed the mold culture to the ambient electromagnetic radiation in his laboratory, which was caused you by the, the lights that were on, the computer in a corner, and, uh, and especially, and he found that later, the ambient cell phone radiation you know, from the nearby cell phone tower that was broadcasting cell phone radiation. He found out that the, the production of biotoxins in this culture went up more than 600 times. The, the, not only that the, the mold suddenly put out significantly more mycotoxins to protect themselves, but also much more virulent, much more vicious, more poisonous mycotoxins. And I took that experiment as a, was for me a big light bulb went on. And that is, when you have a mom, I bring it back now to the mom that has maybe low grade Lyme disease, you know, uh, clinically not relevant Lyme disease, she has an infection, there's a few microbes in there that shouldn't be there, but mom is doing well. Now, you expose this mom to significant amounts of electromagnetic fields of the same nature as in this laboratory in Switzerland. The molds inside us and the Lyme spirochetes inside this mom suddenly believe they're being attacked or they feel they're being attacked and they respond to that attack with the only mechanism that they have and that is to produce more potent biotoxins and more uh, more biotoxins and more potent biotoxins and and with that suddenly mom's system is overwhelmed with biotoxins and also the molds and the spirochetes and the mycoplasma starts multiplying they think they're being attacked they're threatened to be extinguished and so the, the response is to make more babies so there's more of them so chances of their genes to survive are higher. This is a simple pure biological response that can be seen anywhere in nature. And so what we have now uh, and, and to give you some numbers that I know that you're, uh, Joe, you're familiar with this but we, we know that in the last 20 years the if you measure the the, the density of electromagnetic fields that we're exposed to. If, if you measure the, the amount of cell phone radiation in a cubic inch of air, it is now several million times higher than it was just 10 years ago. Millions of times higher than it was 10 years ago. These are unbelievable exposures. And the, as, as you're familiar with the, the research, the true research done on cell phone radiation shows it is not safe. There's significant biological effects inside the cell. Uh, the, 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 the cell phone radiation disrupts the communication inside the cell membrane and the, the whole uh, uh, kinases, the, the mechanisms that we have to, to transport signals from the cell wall to the DNA and backwards. Uh, it has been shown that cell phone radiation exposure to a fetus tweaks a number of genes, exact, exactly what we find in the autistic kids, uh, and, and so forth. And so I am postulating, and I can back it up with my clinical results, that the combination of mom having low-grade infections, it may just be viral or mold, yeast, or it may be Lyme disease, um, that this mom that is pregnant today is exposed to millions of times more electromagnetic uh, radiation than she was just 10 years ago. And this, the increase in electromagnetic field exposure in combination with the growth driving effect it has on the microbiome in us explains the, the incredible avalanche of children with neurodevelopmental disorders, not just autism, 
that we're seeing right now. <clears throat> and so this puts the point of intervention much earlier. Before a mom gets pregnant, I want to establish, does she have Lyme disease? Does she not have Lyme disease? If the answer is yes, she needs to be treated during the entire pregnancy. Then secondly, during the pregnancy, I can do wonderful things by decreasing the electromagnetic field exposure 